any problems in. And now he's in out. heaven. He's he's so it's tricky now. They've got to put everything into this, or it's done for Kawazin. He's trying so. He knows where he is. Side, it's not planned for him. So today we're going to take a look at one of the best of Valorant games that has ever happened, Loud versus NRG. Honestly, maybe considering, you know, the kind of history of these teams and the crowd and what was at stake and all of that, maybe you could argue that this is the best game of Valorant that was ever played with the two overtimes in the last two maps, which is a crazy series. And we'll start off here towards the end of the final map, uh, round 22, and it's 11-10 to Loud. It's really close. Uh, NRG are mounting this comeback as you can kind of see by the timeline here. Uh, they're on their way back and what they're going to go for here, uh, NRG, is they're just going to go for a quick kind of uh, stairs hit. Um, but you see that loud, they're going to try and like slowly, uh, slowly clear the north side of the map. So they're not going to run into each other straight away. Uh, as uh, NRG kind of slowly walk their way towards B main, you know, you see loud here, they're just kind of slowly clearing towards the north side of the map. Sadek's going to see no one is really there, but you've got Aspas here on the jet with his off. Okay, and so when this hit starts to come in from NRG, you'll see in just a second, you know, they're going to send uh, a stun down here and they're going to, you know, send in their knife and all of that. In it goes. Well, Aspas is going to turn around, as you see, and he manages to hit a pretty insane shot. I mean, we can go back. You barely see it on the spectator here because it's just so fast and Victor just, you know, dies probably without even seeing it. But then... Aspas is also going to manage to find Artis as well, and so he finds a second kill, and we're in now a 5v3, right? We're in a 5v3. Uh, Sadek is actually coming across the map. He's actually blast packed over this trip here, and so he's in a pretty tricky spot uh, up here. And our next, as the spike's being planted, our next fight is going to come here. Now, I don't know if Sadak. I can't quite tell if FNS is crouching here, and he's managed to, like, you know, undercut the crosshair of Sadak, or if Sadak isn't quite high enough to be able to see. I'm not quite sure. Um, but either way, what happens is, that, you know, they eventually kind of both just sort of see each other, like, as they're kind of like, oh, what are you doing here? And so, uh, FNS almost finds the kill on Sadak as he boom butts down there. Uh, but now, Aspas is just going crazy. Now, initially, when this happened, he dashed forward, I was like, oh my god, he's gonna... You know, is this a bit of an overheat, right? He's got those two kills, you know, and now he, if he dies here, you know, they could be in some trouble. But he's gonna chase down FNS and manage to find this kill. Now, whilst this is going on some has managed to push spawn so this is good from some here he was uh you know kind of tucked in this corner just here but he's realized hey we're in a 3v5 we need a kill so he's gone trying to find this fight and he's found a 1v1 just there and he's managed to get this kill so we end up in a 2v4 now from this point on it's not gonna be great from loud you know they they probably should be like you know waiting for aspas here to get back to them and really go for this but you're gonna see that Crashy is able to find toys just there as they're not as they're kind of just going to go in one by one. I really love this movement by Crashy's though, right? Because he's expecting that Les is going to come out. He's expecting this fight to come from Tower. So, you know, he kind of knows, well, you know, the last guy saw me in this corner. So he's going to pre-aim this corner. So he just takes that little movement to the left. And that just gives him this advantage in this fight, I think, where Les obviously would be, expect him to be in this corner. So he's able to win that fight as well. Now we're in a 2v2 as Crashies is going crazy. And uh, again, you know, it's it's not great from Loud here against Sadak. Doesn't really wait for Aspas long enough to where Aspas is really in this round, right? He's still miles away. And so ultimately, Loud do kind of, you know, throw this situation a bit, maybe getting a bit impatient, the pressure coming on and whatnot. Some sentences are all to make sure that Aspas can't get in. But from this point, you know, this round was pretty much over with the time. Aspas just goes and saves his up. Crashies with an absolutely massive round, and Salmon Crashies would come up big here for NRG as they would continue their comeback. But now let's come to round number 24 because NRG actually took the lead and went up 12 11, and it was Loud who needed a round. And uh, they start off a bit split here, NRG, but you're going to see that we just get very aggressive down here towards B main from uh, from Loud. As you see, Sadek, you know, blast backing out straight away. Out comes a stun. They destroy uh, the, uh, the the camera just there, and they start to, you know, push down here with this smoke. The thing is, they then even go, you know, even more aggressive with it because they're going to get up this tripwire here, our breach and our raise, and we're actually going to breach all this, right? So these two, upon hearing the breach ult, Som and uh, FNS, they're in a lot of trouble here, right? Because... You know, off the breach ult, they know that people are going to be, you know, hunting them down this way. But there isn't really anywhere for them to go, right? I mean, they can't really, like, this is a risk, right? If you just, like, run away from this and try and come, you know, one of these two directions, 
you don't know what's going on out there, right? So they're in a bit of a tricky scenario. So the rest of the team has to make a mad dash to try and like help them, right? At this point, they're kind of forced into doing an A hit almost. It's kind of a bit of a weird uh, scenario where, you know, they're really worried about kind of just getting pinched. So you see they get up to this spot, but they can't really go much further without, you know, feeling like, ooh, we could be in some trouble. So the rest of the team tries to come and help them, right? You know, to get them out of this pickle. Uh, but Aspas is waiting for them. He manages to get the first... Okay, this isn't the cleanest gunfight he had uh, all day. He had some insane moments, but that probably wasn't his best. Uh, we end up in a 4v4, and they will come onto the site, and uh, actually NRG send in their own breach hole as well just to clear the site. So they get on, and FNS then hits an insane shot and wins that fight against Sadak and manages to get out without being traded. Toys, I think, finds this kill. This is actually less, but I think Toys finds this kill or either spamming or, or whatnot uh, through the smoke, and uh, Crash is full. So we end up in a 3v3, okay? But again, they're about to find this advantage as they start to get the spike down. FNS is going to push up here, and he's going to end up in a bit of a tricky spot where he's going to end up pushing uh, towards the spawn, and uh, he's going to end up just in this corner, and he's going to win this fight against uh, Les just there as well. And he sends out the Cypher ult. And at this point, I was like, oh my god, NRG, you know, FNS is going to win the game for NRG here, right? He got two massive kills. They're going to win the round. I think what is about to happen is this Cypher is going to cause them a bit of a confusion here with Artis. Artis on top of uh, of the little like platform here on A. You're going to see that when this ping goes off, they open the door and Kalenzine comes out here. Okay, so he gets pinged like just there. Just where he is right there. That's when the first ping goes off. And I don't know if the door didn't have time to shut again or whatnot, but he actually just comes back the other way. And I think the thing is, NRG then believe that both people are here. Right, they believe that both people are in sands. FNS is just playing it safe because you know he as long as he lives, he you know is in a really strong position here. So he's just playing it safe, which is absolutely fine. But you'll see in just a second the when we come back uh, to Kalanzine's POV, Artis in a second is just gonna run across his his face, basically. Perhaps not quite realizing that he's in main. Right? I think that must be the case. You see, you just got a glimpse of it there. The artist just like crosses his face. And so Cowan Zine just spams the top of the wall, seeing Artis, and he gets a kill. Right, whilst that's going on, uh, the second Cypher ping is now going off, and so they know where this Brim is. And so the other two remaining NRG players, you know, focusing on this Brim, because they've got a great little uh, angle on him here. He's kind of trapped in between the two of them, and he dies. But while Som is trying to fight that, he's then dying to uh, the Aftershock just there, and he actually dies to that. So we end up in this 1v1. I don't know, like, I I don't know if, yeah, I think I think the Cypher ult kind of almost baited Ar Artis a bit there, and then Kalanzine hits that shot as well. I, I like, the most pressure this, this guy's been under, probably in his life, and he hits an insane just shot there on FNS, and uh, ultimately Loud would tie up, and we go to overtime. Okay, now let's come to round number 30, and this is a bit of a punish here for something that Loud do quite a lot, and you'll see it. So we get the kind of early stun in A main down from Loud, uh, just there and they're gonna push off Aspas just here, right? But one thing that loud kind of do which not a lot of other teams do is they will just trust Aspas to hold down a place of the map just completely on his own often areas like a main here You know where you would normally have a bit more support than just you know one breach done often You'll find you know either the breach is kind of sticking around or you'll have someone by the door to kind of double swing this and whatnot Loud just trust Aspas. They, they're just like he's Aspas he can hold it on his own, right? And they do this across multiple maps, you know, <laughs> and where he just goes off on his own, and it's like, you're Aspas, you'll be fine. Uh, but uh, NRG this time are able to punish that, right? They send in the KO knife here, they send in uh, the little cypher cage to, you know, get a bit close to him, and they're gonna send in a really nice stun there as well. He gets stunned, gets destroyed, really nice stuff by NRG to find this first kill, and because it's Aspas and they're trying to treat him alone, right? No one's there for a trade or anything like that. Now, ultimately, maybe buying into the fact that, oh, it's Aspas, he'll be completely alone. Zadok has managed to get here and does manage to get this kill onto FNS just there. Um, but he is ultimately going to die as NRG come and swing this together and manage to get the kill back. So we end up in a 4v3. And at this point, I was like, oh my god, Artis is in such a good position here. right? All of the things are going on in A main, so they probably think that maybe everyone's there. But Artis is up here on his own and he's about to get a free kill here on Kalanzine. Kalanzine is about to do one of the most unbelievable things I think I have ever seen in Valorant. Because not only does he win that fight, he somehow manages to turn and get another kill. Honestly, I have no idea how he did that. I mean, we can go back and watch it in full speed as well just here. Because it is honestly unbelievable. He does that and then turns and gets another one. 
How? I do not know. We end up in a 2v2, and the game is on the line here for NRG. It's 15-14 loud, so they have to win this round. Uh, and we end up in a 2v2, but they're going to play this 2v2 pretty well. I mean, some ends up in a bit of a situation there, where less, you know, if the timing was just a bit different, maybe he dies there. But we end up in this 2v2, uh, but they're going to pick their timing here, uh, NRG. I'm not sure if they, uh, you know, maybe heard less coming up or dropping down here. Uh, but, you know, they, they find a great timing for this stun. They swing together and they manage to get not one, but both kills just there. Good from those two at the end uh, for NRG and a good uh, punish of Aspas early on as well. And also this round just included Kawazine going absolutely crazy. But after this round came round number 31, and this is the round that NRG will 100% want back because they end up in a super good spot here, NRG. They're on the defensive side this time uh, in round 31, and uh, you're going to see that loud they go for like a uh, fast A hit through Sands, uh, but it's really well dealt with by NRG. They're ready for it, and uh, they deal with it very, very well. So in come uh, loud, right? But we're going to get the smoke here from Som, and they just don't let them in, right? They're, they're just saying, you're not getting in. You know, we're ready for anything. I mean, even here from uh, from uh, Victor as well. You know, after he hears the up dash or whatever, right? He even puts a nade, a KO nade here. So they can't even push that, right? So they just trap them in sense here. They just say there's no way you're getting out. And we've got artists watching, uh, you know, on the other side as well. So they're basically... Loud are just trapped kind of in Sands and in A main. And NRG, they managed to find the first couple kills here as well. And so they just end up in a really, really strong position. Uh, but ultimately, Loud will manage to win this round. And we'll talk about how they managed to do it. So you see, we've got the cages here. We've got the smokes up, right? There's just nowhere for Loud to go. That smoke finally fades. Crashies gets that kill. We end up in a 5v3. What they're about to do next, NRG, is also really good. Because not only did they send in the first flash here that Kawanzine turns, but as he turns, they send in a second flash. And Victor then uh, manages to get that one okay he gets traded that's absolutely fine we're in a 4v2 and this is going to end up being a bit of a settled 4v2 but i think this is where they would want this back right because again they know you know where this guy is obviously and they're about to see less as well without him getting a kill they're about to ping down here and so they know where both players are they've got artists watching in case they come back the three on the site here they're in a really really good spot there is time left right we've still got 58 seconds left here uh, but you see, if we come back to the map, you know, they've pinged where Les is as well, so they know where both players are. They're in a good spot. But here, and, and FNS talked about it in the, in the kind of post-match interview, you know, that they had some problems maybe with, you know, one person swinging and the other not, and maybe some, you know, miscommunications and stuff like that. I think he might have been talking about this round, right? Because as they're trying to, like, spam Les there, I mean, Les does really well to kind of wide swing this and ends up, you know, with a 1v1 versus some. It's really well played uh, by Les here as he manages to get into that 1v1. And then he's even going to hunt down FNS and almost kills him as well. And then again, Crashy's here as he's backing up away from this brim, you know, perhaps not realizing exactly where Les is. You know, he basically just runs into him blind and Les manages to get another kill. And FNS is on 4 HP here. And I just thought, oh, Les is going to swing him and he's going to die on such low HP. But actually FNS manages to win that fight just there. And so we end up in a 2v1 again. So even though it wasn't perfect from them here at NRG, you know, they still ended up in a good scenario where it's a, a 2v1. Uh, they don't quite know where uh, uh, their last uh, loud player is here, but, you know, they, they have a decent idea. And you even see artists, you know, getting ready and, and we're just playing safe and kind of seeing where he's going. You know, we're backing out here for FNS and he is going towards this B site. So he's about to hit one of the most insane shots in Valorant history because he taps the spike. And right here you think, oh, this is over, right? No chance. Zero percent chance of this one. And he manages to hit that shot just straight away. And now it's a 1v1. And I mean, that is an insane shot to hit at that time <laughs> against an off. Like, you can't miss. Uh, that's insane. And then he kills FNS as well and wins the round for Loud. And for NRG, this, pro this was probably the round that was probably the most painful of all of them to lose. And ultimately, though, we would end at round number 34. The fifth overtime here would be the deciding one. And uh, even though we've seen a lot of these rounds previously, it was kind of, you know, wh whoever needed it, one player would just go absolutely insane for 30 seconds or whatnot. This one was a really well-played round, I think, on the whole by Loud. And you'll see what I mean, because what they're going to do here is they're gonna you know just kind of uh, focus here towards dish not too worried about a main but that is where nrg are gonna come pretty quickly uh but keep your eye on these two players here right because initially they think about going back but sada goes no we've seen the artist you know we saw in that previous round the artist uh you know was up here on his own so sada you know th these two going like fully clear this right is there actually anyone here and you know they find out the answer is no right there's no one here uh, so they get that control, right? And so also we've got Aspas updrafting over this Cypher trip. 
And so now he's behind them, right? And so Loud are in a pretty good spot here. But these two are going to play it really well as well. Because these two know, okay, we've got Aspas getting the control here. We've got the control up here. So, you know, if all of NRG are trapped in there, you know, that means that they might push us, right? And, and this is something that, you know, teams have to be very aware of. You know, if a team only has very little space, they might come and try and, you know, push you for more space later on. And you'll see that's exactly what happens. But look, we, we're disciplined here, right? We're not going too fast. And you would think that Aspas really is the major threat in this round that, you know, they, they don't really know about him. It is possible that someone, you know, could have come all the way down here across the zip line and come this way. So it's not like you know, FNS here who's on Cypher or, or NRG, you know, don't think there's any possibility of that happening, but still, it's it's unlikely. But you see they go pushing spawn, right? Victor goes to try and, and get some more space, right? Seeing if he can get spawn. Uh, and he does flash around the corner, but ultimately they are able to get out and survive that, those loud players. And actually, Aspas is the one who gets spotted by FNS and actually goes down to 12 HP. So they know that Aspas is here now. But again, we're going to see some really good stuff from Loud overall. We're about to get an amazing aftershock. Watch this. Aftershock from Kalenzine down here pushes Victor. Because obviously, they'd seen that Victor had flashed around this corner into Sadak. I mean, just an amazing first kill to get here from Loud. And Sadak is about to blast pack in. The timing, I think, with a flash here is just going to be ever so slightly off. You'll see as he starts to come in. As uh, they start to make their way towards the site. So... Everyone's starting to now, you know, group up and come towards the site. Sadek comes in. He is going to die. You see that this flash here is just a tad late there. Crashy is, is uh, just able to get that, you know, the flash just goes off now just as he dies. So we're slightly, ever so slightly off on the timing there. That's kind of the one mistake Loud make in uh, this round. But whilst that distraction is being caused, you know, the rest of Loud are now starting to, you know, push in. Right, we've got less coming behind where Som is here as well. Like, all starting to push in. And Ardis in his position, right, he was putting up these uh, little jet one ways, but obviously as soon as this goes down, you know, Les is going to have a free kill on him. So he kind of has to act from this position, right? As soon as the smoke goes down, he now, you know, kind of has to do something. So he tries to swing out here, but ultimately he is going to lose this fight against Kalenzin there. And then Toys comes down and gets another one. We end up in a 4v2 and ultimately, you know, Aspas was still going to be a major threat, even if they did start to win these fights. But ultimately, Loud are going to win out these fights and win the game. Uh, just a truly remarkable series. I mean, with the crowd going crazy, with the history that these two teams have, or at least the cores of the teams. It's just, it was so insane. And honestly, I could have made an hour-long video about this game because there were so many crazy moments, crazy rounds. This was just a little flavor of it. And if you didn't watch this game in full, go back, do yourself a favor, go watch it in full because it is well worth it for one of the greatest games that has ever been played in Valorant. And uh, the rivalry between NRG and Loud now going forward will just be so much fun to watch as we go into like the America's League and whatnot, because it's just always giga bangers.